Yeah, let's, uh, let's just uh, pray for a while. Let's get our, eye, our hearts fixed on God. Um, I love both of those songs. We follow after a faithful God. Holy, holy, holy. A continuous... Uh, Continuous in heaven, it's going to be a continuous, holy, 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 day and night. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your word, Lord. We pray for our city, Lord. We pray for your people. Lord, uh, just wake us up. Prepare our hearts, Lord. We just want to serve others in a greater... uh, People have so many needs, Lord. Hear their cry. Thank you, God. We worship you. We glory you. Glorify you. Pray for uh, Pastor uh, Glenn coming on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, he'll be here for outreach this Saturday. We want to pray for prayer. Bring people out to pray, Lord. We pray because you are with us. You are with us. You are amongst us, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We glorify you. We thank you for your faithfulness. You are so, so faithful. You are our rock. You are our fortress. You are our high tower. There is none like you. The world is looking for a false God, but you are the living, true God. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. We pray for those who need prayer within the church. Be with us. And we just thank you. We love you. We pray for families, Lord. We pray for marriages. We pray for... uh, unsaved loved ones. We pray for saved loved ones that have falling, uh, fallen away, Lord. Stir them up, Lord. You gave us a promise that uh, we and our household will be saved. We pray for them, Lord. They're listening to the world. They're listening to the enemy, Father. Draw them. Draw them with cords of love that cannot be broken. You are worthy. What a mighty God we serve. And we pray for souls, Lord, within this church. All the people that have been calling this week, every single call that I took, Lord, just touch those people. Minister, there's so many hurting people. They're just hurting and they're reaching out. And I think even when they reach out to us, they don't know even who they're reaching out to. They just want problems fixed and and God wants a relationship. Thank you, Father. So bless these words tonight. Bless these thoughts and thank you for your people. We pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Okay, so today, um, um, when we are talking about the Holy Spirit, the ministry, the third person of the Trinity, and um, last week we talked about the assurance that the Holy Spirit gives to to his people. Today we're going to talk about 
the work of that Holy Spirit as it relates to the Savior. So just a, um, and I think last week we might have done 10 different things, and I think tonight maybe six, seven, eight, whatever. See if we can list this many and see what we come up with. So the first thing I was thinking about when talking about this is the Savior was begotten by the Holy Spirit. And that's in Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 35. Uh, Pastor Keith, you want to read that? Luke one thirty-five. So you have this correlation of the Holy, with the Holy Spirit and the, the Savior who was begotten by the Holy Spirit. This is the supernatural conception of, of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Um, and he'll be called the Son of God. So this was a, a, an amazing event. Um, but the Holy Spirit was right there in, in, in all of this. And this is what we want to look at tonight is, is this, this interaction um, of, uh, you know, we, you read a lot that Jesus Christ prayed to the Father and had this amazing relationship with the Father and, and didn't even, you know, didn't even do anything without first praying and, um, and getting like divine direction from the Father, but the Holy Spirit, it's right there too in many of these verses. So the second thing that we want to talk about is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, the Savior was anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Savior was anointed. And remember we talked about, I think last week or even the week before, that this anointing that comes upon is for a... Um, a, a, a single event that the Father has planned. And, um, you know, I know we pray for an anointing on the words, and we talked about this anointing on the words, an anointing on the message, an anointing on the ear. And the Old Testament has many things about the anointing and the, the holy of holies, how all those utensils were anointed. Um, but I, again, the more I'm studying this, it's, it's like, um, you know, we just walk by faith in the anointing because there's an anointing on the one who is, you know, called by God. And, and Jesus Christ, uh, the Savior, uh, was anointed by the Holy Spirit. So let's look at some of these. We got uh, Matthew 3.16. Uh, Martha, you want to read that one? Praise God. So you see Jesus Christ being baptized, coming out of the water, and the Holy Spirit coming down um, and, um, and, and upon him. Um, okay, so uh, Matthew 3.16. So we got Luke 4.18. Steph, you want to read that one? Luke 4.18. And listen to these words and listen to where the word anointing and the spirit and Christ, it all, it's like comes together so beautifully. Praise God. So, um, yeah, and... and this is where um, um, Jesus Christ is speaking um, from the Old Testament, 
right, in, in Isaiah 61, and he opens the book, and he opens it to Isaiah, and he talks about preaching the word and healing the brokenhearted and preaching deliverance to those who are, who are captive, recovering the sight of the blind, and then he ends up closing that and says, today this is fulfilled in your presence. It's a, it's a really amazing, uh, amazing thing um, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord is in verse 19. So this was prophecy fulfilled when Jesus Christ opened up the book. And um, it, it's amazing. But um, he was anointed. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. And that anointing is so, so important in the ministry um, because these are words are spirit. They're spiritual words. These words of mine are spirit and they are truth. Uh, John 6, 63. Spiritual words. We, we hear uh, through the spirit. We're, we, we're anointed with the spirit. We operate uh, by walking in the spirit, walking by faith in the spirit. Um, okay, um, Cindy, um, Acts 10, 38. There's three of them here, and this is this is good too. So God anointed him with the Holy Spirit. So this is Peter telling the story to Cornelius, and. Um, Remember, Cornelius was a, a just and godly, God-fearing, reverence man who gave to the poor. And with all that, even fearing God, he was not saved. And he, had to re- he heard the gospel message as Peter spoke, and this was part of um, Peter preaching to Cornelius. And Peter um, clarifies that God anointed him. God anointed Christ. He had an anointing of the Holy Spirit upon his life. Okay, so the third one uh, that we're talking to, and um, Raul, um, uh, turn to John chapter 6, verse 27. This is the Holy Spirit seals Christ. Remember we talked about the sealing of the Holy Spirit a little bit ago, how important it is to be sealed. Uh, Ephesians 1, 13, there's a sealing you know, and this is this just gives us great assurance, and um, and really um, shows that you are His. You have been purchased and bought with a price. And this talks about when you hear the word "sealing" or "sealed," that speaks of security in in the, in the highest level of you know the Holy Spirit. This is part of it. So, um, yeah, John six twenty seven, Raul, please. Okay, so this uh, this picture here, where it's the the true bread that comes from heaven. You know, he says uh, God fed you in the wilderness with manna, but I'm the true bread that comes down from heaven, and uh, this is what this is all talking about. And the, and the ceiling is just it's it's where Christ. Uh, is identifying with the Father and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is, is right there. And you're seeing, you know, when you're seeing the Holy Spirit and this work, um, it, it, it's, so, it's so wonderful to, to, to read about this because it's, it's really fortifying the Trinity, uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, uh, next one is we're going to be talking about this... Um, uh, the Savior was led by the Spirit. So for that, we're looking at um, 
uh, uh, Desiree, uh, um, Matthew 4.1. Matthew 4.1, the Savior led, was led by the Spirit. Yeah, so he, that's it, just one, yeah. Cause, uh, so he was led by the Spirit. Jesus depended upon the Holy Spirit for leading him. And it's amazing because that, that leading of the Holy Spirit took him to be tempted. How's that one? You know, we wouldn't think about that's being led by the Spirit. You know, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and it's of God. You know, we would, uh, uh, a lot of us would be praying against that. Lord, uh, remove this from me. I, you know, no, that's, you know. Uh, but, yeah, the Holy Spirit led him into this position uh, to be tested, to be tempted in the wilderness. Remember, the first Adam fell in a perfect situation in the garden, and the last Adam tempted in the wilderness came through you know that's amazing we uh, adam was in a perfect environment and failed and jesus christ went into the wilderness right into the playground of where satan was to be tempted and and was very and, and was victorious um okay so led by the spirit this one is similar to it uh jesus was filled by the spirit same story different book luke 4 1 Marisol Luke 4 1. So the Savior filled. The Savior was filled by the Holy Spirit. Same story, but a different book. Yep, wilderness. Yep. So just coming back from Jordan, and um, you know, many great things are about Jordan. It's a different story. But then, right after that, right after that amazing thing, then led into the but full of the Spirit. And um, I think we talked a couple of weeks ago how important it is to be filled with the Spirit of God. And uh, and and the filling is is uh, again, it's not something you have to ask for which most people do, oh, fill me, Lord, you know, fill me overflowing. You know, that's not the prayer. The prayer is because the Holy Spirit dwells within you. <laughs> so it's just believing by faith that you're going to be filled with the Spirit of God. But this is a continuing thing. This, is a not, this was the only part of the Holy Spirit that we don't have to, that, that doesn't happen at the time of salvation once. And so this is a continuous but we, we must believe by faith that he, that he fills us. So Jesus Christ was filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, so those two go together, and he overcame temptation because he was filled. How about that one? You know, sometimes temptations overwhelm us. Trials overwhelm us. Situations of life overwhelm us. And it's because we react in our flesh. And either you're going to walk in the spirit or you're going to walk in the flesh. There's, there's nothing in between. It's it. And by faith, we walk in the spirit. We walk with God and he's with us and he's speaking to us. And, and, uh, but we overcome all that. To be overcomers, we overcome that by being filled with the spirit of God. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, uh, Ephesians talks many things about how our walk should be in, in Ephesians chapter 5. It tells us to walk in love, walk in the spirit. Don't walk, how about, how about don't walk as a fool. <laughs> Some of us are walking as fools, you know. It, it just comes out. My foolishness comes out. And, you know, and God says you're acting the fool, you know. But, um, but we overcome, we overcome that by walking in the spirit. Um, okay, um, Jess, oh, this is a good one. So the, the Savior... Um, the, 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 the Savior offered himself, 
he gave himself. Uh, you know, I, when, when Christ came to the earth in, in um, Philippians, you don't have to go there, in chapter 2, it says he emptied himself. When he came to the earth, he, he emptied, it, he's still God, but he became man. And that word for emptied, the Greek word is kenosis. And um, it's the only way he could identify with mankind in doing all that. He became man. 100% God, but 100% man. The God-man. It's amazing. And in doing all that, he learned, it says, it says he learned to suffer <laughs> like. I mean, it's like that. It's, it's very close to that. He learned to be a servant. And he took on the mind of, of being very low in doing this. And, it, and it's such a beautiful picture. But also, in all of that, it's the main reason why he could offer himself at Calvary for our sins. And that's exactly what he did with, with the Holy Spirit right there with him. So who, who oh, Jess, um, uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Hang on. Think 14. Yeah. 914. Hebrews. Nine fourteen. Wow. How do we serve God is when we because Christ offered himself and that cleanses or purges, washes our conscious mind thinking a mind that would only think on things of this world. And according to God, those are dead works. It's, 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 you, it's, it's, bringing, it's not bringing nothing to God. It's wood, hay, and stubble. Uh, but um, he purges and cleanses our, our thinking and our mind from anything that's dead works that we can serve a living God. But I love how this talks about, because it's talking about the blood of Christ, it's talking about his sacrifice, the one and for all sacrifice in Hebrews 10.10. 10, and that was all done through the eternal spirit. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit here is, is an eternal God. He, he's eternal. So it really fortifies, again, the Trinity. Um, the Holy Spirit isn't just, just has a job here on earth until the rapture, and then he's done. No, it, it, it's an eternal. It's part of the eternal plan. the The Father had an eternal plan. The Son, right here, executes that eternal plan by dying on the cross for all of mankind. And then the Holy Spirit is is who's making sure that that plan gets properly executed right uh, by the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. So um, it's wonderful. It's a it's a wonderful verse. Uh, Hebrews 9, 14, the eternal spirit, and Christ offered himself uh, for that, okay? Um, we're back to Keith, okay, so um, what, what number is that? Okay, so, I'm, okay, um, the Savior um, was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit. It's the power of God through the Holy Spirit. It's a wonderful thing. Um, I need Mirtha at First Peter. Uh, well, Keith will go to Romans 1 4. Romans 1 4. And then Mirtha will go to First Peter 2 18. 3 18. 4 18. No, 3 18. 3 18. Yeah. 1 Peter 3.18, the resurrection 
of the dead by the Holy Spirit of God, the power of God, the deutimus. Okay, Pastor. <laughs> According to the spirit of holiness, God is holy. He's a holy God. The spirit of God is the holiness of God. The Son of God declared with power. God raised him from the dead. And, And thank God for that. You know, he died upon the cross for our sins. But if God did not accept that sacrifice, there would have been no resurrection. And, and we would be doomed forever. But God raised him from the dead by the power of the, of, from the spirit of holiness. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Mm. Uh, um, well, uh, yeah, um, usually uh, the word spirit, when it's speaking of the Holy Spirit, it does have a capital letter. Um, does it? Um, oh, I'm looking, yeah. Um, hang on a minute. Yeah, um, and it could be, but I think this is part of the work of the Holy Spirit also because there's other verses um, of the power of the Spirit. New King James is? Okay, there you go. Um, Hang on one minute. Yeah, um, in italics in my Bible, it's in the side being capital. So um, either or, so prob- probably a capital there, yep. Huh? Yeah. I mean, because our human spirit is not holy, you know. It, it, born again, yeah, you know. Um, the spirit of the holiness, yeah, you know, his resurrection from the dead was... Even even in uh, yeah it's I think it's a spirit of it's the Holy Spirit yeah so beautiful beautiful yeah that's a good point though because yeah usually when you see the word spirit here in a small s it speaks of your human spirit so I don't think in this case so what do you got you got it is that it did I give you the right verse yeah does it sound right. Sound right? Okay, go ahead. (laughs) Mm. Wow. There you go. Wow, beautiful. So yeah, uh, the quickening of the Spirit speaks of the resurrection. The word quickening in the Greek means made alive. Christ was... Uh, put to death in his flesh, but he was made alive by the Holy Spirit. That's a be- that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And uh, the just, Christ was just for the unjust, which is us. And uh, he made us just, though. Uh, he brought us to God, you know, through that resurrection. That's beautiful. So... Um, Okay, so those are seven. I think those are good. Just a couple more uh, comments. So, you know, the Bible does also give us a lot of uh, stories within the Bible that, you know, that the Holy Spirit then used the apostles and men in different areas of being led. And, and, and basically, um, uh, these divine appointments, and we we're talking about that today, is all through the Holy Spirit. And Martha had an amazing divine appointment today. Um, at the gas station, complaining in the beginning, complaining until God sh- really got it. But it's wonderful, you know, because, you know, sometimes we, you know, I, I think of that verse every time. I, I, I mean, that you could be, that you could be unaware attending angels. 
you know, without even knowing it. And that person could have been, you, you, I mean, so wow. I mean, it, but it's wonderful. But, um, but these are detailed stories stories that are in the Bible that help us and help us in this area that uh, the Holy Spirit, um, you know, with the Savior, but also with us is doing just a, just an amazing job. The, the story of the Ethiopian eunuch. Um, so um, Stephanie, you want to turn to Acts 8, 29. Um, so it, it, it talks about that the Holy Spirit led Philip. And that's all I wanted to look at. I mean, there's a leading of the Holy Spirit within our lives, if we're if we're open, and uh, you know, open mind compared to a closed mind, not open to the world, but open to the things of God. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Time to go. Time to go near. That's amazing. All from the Spirit of God direction do, do you believe that the holy spirit is leading you do you believe he's guiding do, do you believe he's concerned in you, what you do in your day very much so very much uh, so we want to be um we want um god awareness you know there's so many things that i'm aware of in the day but is god the the highest priority there you know hopefully um, even uh, with Saul, Saul of Tarsus, remember when Saul becomes blind and then they pick him up and then it's Jesus and, and through the Spirit tells him, listen, you're going to go go to this town and wait and then I'll give you instructions from there. Not too much, but enough to go to this place and, you know, like, you know, he didn't even know if he was at the right place because he was led, he was blind, but he assumed that he was in the right place, but I think the, the the main topic is wait for my instruction, you know, and that's amazing, because I got to go work on a couple of Christians to send that send this guy to you, uh, because nobody wants to see you, Paul. I mean, the guy was killing Christians. I mean, that was his main focus. So uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, you can read on that. That's uh, Acts nine, uh, um, verse one through whatever six seven. Uh, <clears throat> Um, also, uh, Cornelius, um, who was a centurion, um, and it says, while Peter spoke to him and his household, the Holy Spirit just fell upon them. That's amazing. So the presence of the Holy Spirit, even as the word of God is being preached, Acts 10, 44. The word's being spoken. The Holy Spirit falls. Wow, beautiful. <clears throat> and um, can we be? Can we be? Can our hearts be prepared and ready to receive the Holy Spirit when the Word of God is spoken? Because I need that in my life. I need. I need. Uh, I need His presence. Uh, the presence of God in my situations. I need to know that He is with me. I need to know and believe that he'll never leave me or forsake me. That's beautiful. What a promise of God. How do you believe you can lose your salvation when the Bible verse says, I will never know, never know, never leave you or forsake you? One of them is right, one of them is wrong. You know, so I'm going to go with what the Bible says, and that's it. I mean, it's it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. So, um, and then also uh, the, the, um, the the jailer, when uh, Peter and um, 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 uh, Silas, it was, they're singing songs in the jail, and all of a sudden the jail door, everything opens up, and they get to walk right out. This amazing work of the Holy Spirit right then and there where even this jailer, because he knew the consequences, was going to kill himself. The prisoners are gone. The, everything's... And, and 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 Paul speaks up and says, wait, we're all here. You know, we're all here. And the guy gets saved. The guy gets saved. I mean, from going from one thing to another. I mean, it's just beautiful. Um, that's Acts 16. Um, let me go one more verse and we're we're good tonight. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 20. 
And I love this too. And I hope this is, encourages you uh, that you can, you know, for the rest of this week, um, look at verse 22. Now, here you're going to see a small s, Pastor Keith. So it is his, his spirit, but he's being led by the Holy Spirit because that's, you know, our human spirit is in touch with the Holy Spirit. So he says, and now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that are going to fall before me. So here he's going to Jerusalem which he's, he's wanted to do for a while, but he knows that it's pretty dangerous. Um, but this is where the Holy Spirit is leading him. And, um, you know, and, and the thing to consider and think about this is sometimes in the leading with the Holy Spirit, he's not telling you the whole story. And it's because he wants to know, do you trust God and are you going to walk by faith? Because this is our testing and our teaching by the Holy Spirit, which gets us to learn to walk by faith. If he told you everything that would happen, you would probably say, that's not of God, I'm not going. You know, and we, w- we would be fighting with ourselves of, oh, is that of God or is not of God? But no, just trust in me. This is where we're going. And, um, and, um, but I don't know the things that are going to happen. But look at verse 23. This is what I do know. And the Holy Spirit tells us just a little bit of what's going on. But that little bit is enough. Because that's where I know that it's a God. But look at this. Save the Holy Spirit witnesses in every city. Every city that I have been to up to now, we've seen the presence of God and the Holy Spirit working in people's lives. And and, and that's a great question for you. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing this happening in this church? Are you seeing people's lives being changed? Or are you just preoccupied with yourself? Are you just, uh, but look, look with spiritual eyes. Look what, look what's going on. Look, but so Paul is saying, man, I'm seeing the Holy Spirit working among people. I'm seeing him doing an amazing, in every city I'm going to. I'm seeing the work of the Holy Spirit. This is not the work of my flesh. This is the work of God. And then, and then look at what he says. Saying, he goes, he goes, I've seen the Holy Spirit work in every city, saying, except bonds and afflictions are waiting for me or abide me. So he says, I'm seeing chains, and I'm going to see much affliction waiting for me as I go by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And there's another thing that most people would say, that's not of God. It's not of God. God's not going to put me in an area where chains and jail and afflictions are going to happen in my life. How is that at all godly related? But it was all of God. Every single bit of it, every step that Paul took was a a step of faith and and I love that. Let me just read. So these bonds here um, are chains, and abide me is they await for me. It's like <laughs> you're going, and there's guy, there's you know, police with chains because you're a wanted man, and and that's what the Holy Spirit is leading me into, and it was for a purpose to get them to. To go, you know, um, you know, because there's danger in Jerusalem, and he'll be arrested. But he's a Roman citizen, and and, and God's got all that detail laid out. That is not even, you know, Paul has no idea what it is, and this is where we learn to trust God in the little things, you know, uh, the small things. Whatever awaits me, whatever's ahead of me. You know, the one thing I know is the Holy Spirit is with me. And that's enough. That's got to learn to be enough for me. Um, just today I received a, 
interesting email from Pastor Scheller. And he wants, he's wanting the pastors in America to start teaching um, over, over the next month or two Sundays about, uh, a tough, about persecution that basically could be happening here. And people look and say, that can never happen in the United States. And, um, and there was a, one of our, uh, well, a, a, I guess a friend that Pastor Scheller met, and he was a missionary to, um, I think, to Turkey. And everything was good, and he was a missionary, and then they came for him one day. And um, his wife was let go after two weeks, and he was held and attained for over two years. And, um, and the things that, you know, they thought he was a spy, they thought this. And, and so the whole thing about it is um, he's believing and thinking that, um, um, you know, the Bible talks about times and areas of, of trouble. And during that trouble, many that are weak within the church and the body of Christ will will not be able to make it, you know, because their faith is weak. They haven't been taught it. So Pastor Scheller is, is getting with us to start to pray and think about uh, teaching on topics like this area, which is always a hard thing to say, and it's never to make somebody afraid or scared. It's not intended to that. It's preparation for what the Bible says is happening. And, and and closer and closer and closer, you know. And in all of that, you know, he will protect his people, you know. Um, but we read we read about it in Revelations how many are, you know, martyred for his namesake, and uh, and many in, in in the past have been that. And and um, and he and this gentleman, the last thing he was just basically saying that he was not prepared for it. And when are you really? But he thought as a believer and a pastor, he should have been more prepared for it to be able to handle it. And some of the things that came upon him, he even wanted to just just like kill himself because it was starting to get so intense. These jails were not like the jails in the United States, you know. Uh, they were one crazy, crazy thing. And we hear about stories like Richard Warmbrandt and and men that, you know, recently that has really been tortured, tortured, I mean, uh, amazing torture beyond what humans could even do to humans, really. You know, but that's what took place. And, um, and, and these things could happen quickly. Uh, without, without a notice and without a why. You know, so we can't count on where we're at because a lot of these privilege can disappear like that. So um, keep that in mind. But we want it to be not 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 as an event that it causes fear, but a a a, a way to Lord prepare my heart for when this happens. I think is what I get got out of it. You know, so um, I'll forward that to you later. You know, so. Interesting. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words and the teaching and the, and the direction uh, that the Holy Spirit is bringing us. We are in awe of you, God, because um, what can man do to us? We, we have an amazing Savior. And uh, we thank you, Father. So bless these thoughts to our lives and our hearts. Tomorrow, uh, we pray for the, uh, the homeless shelter um, and, the, and the people that are there, amazing group. Lord, and just thank you for your word. And the Bible still speaks. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.